uh, a lot of the solutions, uh, you have to speak up. I think a lot of the solutions you mentioned uh, uh, work uh, well for um, the, the fiber uh, systems. Um, I was wondering if you could speak more about uh, wireless uh, uh, telecoms and what we can do about that. Um, particularly, I'm, I'm worried about uh, phone subsidies and those are probably a problem, but you probably know better than I do. Yeah. Okay, so wireless, the separate marketplace, we love our mobile devices. Uh, they're not going to substitute for these wires, but they're essential, right? And we've got a really concentrated market there. What we could do there is just make more competition possible. And what's lovely about this whole story is that 95% of any wireless network is the wire, is the fiber. If there's more fiber going more deeply into more neighborhoods across the country, it'll be much easier for competitors to Verizon and AT&T to emerge. So just more competition, even T-Mobile's presence in the marketplace is making a bring your own device plan possible. So we make it possible for more actors like that to show up. Every part of the system becomes a commodity. The device becomes a commodity. There's Wi-Fi everywhere. You know, there's a possibility of uh, internet communications made possible by, by fiber. So fiber policy is wireless policy. These two things really go together. Yes, sir. Hi, Eris, I'm back class of 89. First off, thank you for citing me in your books. I appreciate that. Um, secondly, um, you come up with a figure of 90 billion for ubiquitous fiber coverage. How did you get your 90 billion? <coughs> Uh, in one of the footnotes, I, I say between 50 and 90. This, this number came from Corning. Uh, that's the site that's in the book. That's what they said. Yes. Um, go ahead. Um, Michelle Wisniewski, I, I, first, uh, thank you for your talk just for the uh, announcement. Um, I want to know what is the current position of the Obama administration on this? Is this a priority? And um, if yes, is there any way that something could be done by casting Congress, or does it have to do with true Congress? And, and is there something we can do as citizens to augment the pressure? That's terrific. So uh, the Obama administration has been busy with the banks, and they, we fell in with this. All that part, you know, that really was, <laughs> they had a lot of work to do there. I am confident that technology policy will be more front and center in the second Obama term than it has been in the, in the first. It's going to be very important to give everybody in that system, people on the Hill, as well as people in the administration, political air cover. Real uh, emphatic citizen involvement. You know, understanding that you will be elected or not on the basis of this issue is what will make it possible for people to stand up for fiber access across the country. Right now, if you're in the Senate, there is almost no upside to taking on this issue because you'll just lose all kinds of funding that otherwise comes in from these incumbents. And they, because they have employees in every congressional district, they can make life hell for representatives. Um, they also are very closely political and connected to the administration. So it would take, it does take real political involvement by people, making it clear that this is important, and then a shift will happen. But there's no necessary reluctance to take this on. It's just when you choose your priorities, you're looking for the thing that people really say they care about. Uh, Barry. Why is it, has anybody looked into antitrust uh, litigation? Uh, not yet. Uh, you would think that that market division moment among the cable companies might have triggered some reaction, uh, but it didn't. And I, I can't quite explain why. I think because we thought that the cable companies really were in competition with the telephone companies. That has proven out not to be so. Uh, the Department of Justice has said it's looking into the cable industry but has not yet taken on any antitrust uh, effort. So that's another place where there, there could be motion. Uh, yes, uh, Ron Suarez. Uh, besides uh, trying to reverse how I can state legislatures that prohibit municipal uh, broadband, are there other things that can be done either at the state or uh, at a city ordinance le uh, level, or is it mainly the FCC at the national level where the whole balance? Oh, a lot can be done at the city level. Because if the city has control over its rights of way and hasn't given them away for some reason, um, they could say, we want, we want this municipal network. So if, if a state law isn't in place banning it, a city can do a lot. 
And even if the state law is in place banning it, funny story, the mayor of Seoul faced a law making it illegal in Seoul to build a municipal fiber network. He ignored the law <laughs> and went ahead and built the network. Now, I'm not encouraging Arnold Boston to do this, but it was kind of a funny moment when I was told that two weeks ago. Uh, local leaders can do a lot, but again, they have to feel that they have the support of kids, older people, uh, the whole community to make it possible so, to so do So this it. coming year, the mayor and about that city council yeah. uh, is, is going to be changing in, 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 in New York. Yeah. Um, what kind of uh, movement is already out? I think you've got some of the people who would be interested in working on that here in this room. <laughs> so let's do it. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I would love to see the development that we have grants for the support for it, for your initiative. Yeah. The only one I can think of as a precedent is the Pirate Party in Sweden, which unfortunately uh, is hinged on a, rel a, a, a an issue that's tangential, but uh, is is analytically separate, namely uh, free copyright and, and the end the end of proprietary ownership. We, in your uh, taking the pulse of the zeitgeist of those readers on on Reddit, did uh, did they separate those issues or were they just kind of in general, anti-corporate and everything should be free. Oh, I see this as a very different cross-cutting issue. Um, this is this is infrastructure. This is dirt and wires and highways. You know, this is basic stuff for the country, and it relates to free flow of information issues in some you know, remote way. But uh, people do understand that you need a physical wire. You need that tower. You need investment in order to make this happen. And that because these are expensive facilities, uh, the incumbents have huge advantages that are very difficult to overcome. So no, I, I think people understand that this is an issue that operates at a different level. Yes, Stan. Hi. Uh, so the comparison with electricity is, is great, except that electricity is electricity is electricity. And, right. And as far as we've seen in the history of the development of the infrastructure of networks, cable is different from fiber, is different from copper, and PSTN, PSTN is some or all or, or whatnot, and wireless is independent. Does it make sense for us to push for a much more uh, generalized and cohesive view of infrastructure as a mechanism for deploying uh, internet access and other types of access? And if so, in your view, how would we go about tackling that gargantuan task of unrolling these, you know, uh, incredibly ornate, independent uh, sets of regulations? Actually, I think there is a, a great commonality here. Fiber is better. Fiber is just better than cable because it has this equal ability to upload and download and carries much more information and can be upgraded very, very easily with just advanced optics. Optics are getting faster and faster all the time. It's better than cable or copper wire. Countries around the world are saying, we think it's a, you know, future proof in the next 50 or 100 years. We're going to build conduit that allows that fiber to go through. I agree with you that we need a federal level view of what, what should be basic for Americans. We did that for the telephone, we should do that here. The political lift there is sufficiently difficult that I'd like to start with municipalities that can actually get stuff done and then shame everybody else. Because that's what Kansas City is doing. All other mayors are looking at Kansas City and saying, why can't we have that? Startups are moving to Kansas City. I just heard about a great development where uh, people built something that allows you to give a presentation simultaneously from four different parts of the country using a no latency network and you appear to be standing on the same stage. Or a rock band made out of half holograms and half people. I mean, all these things are coming towards us and every city will want this. We just, well, we need examples on the ground. We need the proof of concept and that's going to come from cities. Uh, yes, on this side, uh, sir. Yeah. Is there any hope of a new FCC chairman maybe favoring the progress in this area? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there is always hope. There's always optimism. Is there any talk of who the next chairman might be? There are all kinds of talk about who the next chairman might be. We don't know. Is there any women out here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> financial intersection between Comcast and 
that would be their nova butter. And if we didn't offer them that incentive of making a super competitive profit, you know, your chart showed the profit, but you didn't show all the investment they had to make. And so who would have done that? And now aren't we going to pull the rug out from under them by saying, once you've made all the money and you're building these great networks, we're going to come in and price control and demand equal access, allow your competitors to come in and free ride on your investment. First answer, you're worse off because you're steadily paying more and more for something you can't afford to live without. And that's not a great state for And also, as a country, we're not taking this leap forward. We're, they have no incentive to upgrade their facilities to make them any better than they are today. And they're second rate today. So those are two ways in which it's not great. Um, yes, they invested a lot, but they invested using public rights of way, public uh, licenses, constant, they got exclusive franchises from a bunch of cities before that was outlawed in 1992. But even then, after 92, these are de facto exclusive franchises. Very difficult for anybody to show up and compete. So it's really a mixed bag. Yes, a lot of private investment, but because they had these public facilities made available to them. And we have a whole body of law that helps us with this. We can pay them back. I guess. Um, OK. Oh, this is a very bad First of all, I'm for common man. I'm sorry, I just got to say one thing. This guy's a leftist. He believes in centralized government supported direct provision of bad um, internet connection in our way. <laughs> I hear all the time that, it, in, for example, New York City and New York City, there's the intention by the incumbents to pull copper, as they call it. They've done it. Your Broad Street is all gone. Sure. I think this is a job for a legal scholar. I don't think they have the right to do that. When did they repeal the actual charters of those companies? We were just talking about this. Um, yeah. Of course, these are directly, publicly supported and created monopolies. And I haven't heard, I've never even seen mention of their charter where it says, no more PSTN. Let me tell you the advantage of the PSTN. This is the public switch telephone network. This is the basic telephone network. I mean, I I mean, telephone. Let me tell you that point of view. Legally, technically, supposedly, they weren't allowed to arbitrarily wiretap and interfere with our communication. So I'm for common carry. So do you know? Yeah, I, I actually they do. Formally repealed the law that says. Yes. They're yes. Asking, have they formally repealed at what level? No, we didn't repeal the law. We reclassified all these guys administratively. The so yeah, we're done. It's, it's all gone. Yeah, but yeah, it counts as an information service. Well, hang on. Let me just tell a story. Just we yeah, sure. could continue this after. Yeah, <laughs> let me tell a story about Sandy. So following Sandy, Verizon has been claiming that its networks were so destroyed by the hurricane that it has to rip out all the copper wire that was served in Lower Manhattan and replace it with fiber, which is a better facility. Fiber completely unregulated at this point. No oversight whatsoever. And so a lot of these buildings are going to be stuck. Right now, there are a bunch of buildings in downtown Manhattan with no phone service. Can you imagine that? And the whole situation is becoming completely deregulated. So just as a matter of fact, this has been the hurricane has really blown through. <laughs> OK, well, I think we need to take a few more uh, questions. Sorry, in the back. I need to address what uh, he was talking about. It turns out that state laws were changed throughout the United States to upgrade the state public switch telephone networks to fiber. The state of New Jersey right now is a show cause law because 100% of the state of New Jersey was supposed to have fiber optics to the home with 45 megabits in both directions. Customers paid $13 billion in that one state for that. Over the last two decades, customers have paid $360 billion in changes in state law. I need to also point out that at and is based on copper wire to the home, the old PSTN. So from our perspective, we've been overcharged $3,000, $4,000 a household for fiber optic wires most people never got. So before you go out and say whether or not we should <coughs> worry, why we bet worse off, we are, we should have been, everybody should have had 45 megabits in both directions starting in the year, but, and, and uh, sorry, 100% should have been completed by the year 2010. So my suggestion would be we should get some money back, and then we should use that for wire. Um, I think one more question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Google clearly gets it that their business depends on people having access to the internet, and, right. yeah, and, and they can do more things if everyone has it, and everyone yeah. has it faster. Why don't Amazon and 
Facebook and Apple and these other companies, you know, go in with it with you know, the determination of Google, whether on the lobbying side or the building up side. Because it's easier for them just to make deals with the distributors, just to be favored sites. In, in a sense, Comcast needs Amazon more than Amazon needs Comcast. So they know they're always going to be in a good position. They're not, they don't think of themselves as advocates for an open, fast internet, because they'll do fine on a more closed... I'm Amazon, and one customer has to drive to the library in right. Massachusetts to buy a, a shirt or a TV set. Yeah. I'm losing sales. You'd think, you'd think they'd leap feet first in the fray. They haven't yet. I'm looking for more corporate friends. And if you find some, let me know, because that would be great. <laughs> but we shouldn't, as a country, and this is sort of the last thing I want to say, we shouldn't have to wait for Google or Amazon or Facebook to do this for us. Uh, this is really a matter of public policy. And even Google can't <laughs> cover the whole country. We shouldn't want them to, because then we'll just be replicating the cable monopolies all over again. So that's it for me. Thank you, Susan.